welcome to Bethan's Kitchen and Garden. Today I'm going to give you a tour around my back garden to show you what I've actually got growing in those um, in that no dig patch that I've recently put in. So um, let's get on with that and I'll stop off Lynn. So here's a an overlook of uh, what the beds are currently looking like and um, we'll go in for a, um, a closer look. So here are the celeriac that you will have seen me plant in previously. So it is beginning to bulb up a little bit, which is good, but I do need to get some mulch on these beds. And up here, I've planted some more sugar snap peas, which uh, haven't had a bad germination. And I'm sorry I can't take the netting off, but um, because it's for butterfly protection, I go in this net as little as often, as, as little as possible. And uh, what's planted here is my purple sprouted broccoli, and it's interplanted with some little gem lettuce. My rose is doing well over here, and the blackberries that I planted are... Um, well, they're a bit slow to get going, actually. I, I would have thought that I'd have had more fresh growth off them than I have. This one's not doing too bad. I'll show you the other two as we go along. This is my pot of leeks. It did have spring onions towards the back, but I've taken all the spring onions, so those leeks will come out soon, and I'll probably either pot some more peas in there or some spring... Um, some French beans... This is ochre. I put um, one seed ochre in, in these two pots. And uh, similarly, this pot at the back is also ochre. And then these three pots, this lettuce is bolted now, so I'll take that out. And um, I'll either put some pak choy or some more lettuce in these three pots. Um, this is the another blackberry, a different kind of blackberry um, which hasn't grown that well but it is beginning to put on a bit of bit of growth now and I've got some lupin and um, minor labata there and some oxeye daisies there and a sedum growing there. This is another empty pot which will either have um, cobra beans in or peas sugar snap peas I expect and down here this is my other blackberry but this is really floundering this is doing nothing at all since I planted it so uh, I'm not sure what to say about that if we just come round to this long bed this bed is empty at the moment it will have my overwintering brassicas in so my collies cabbages and uh, other things, whatever else I've got, swedes, turnips will go in here. And I meant to say there's a space in this bed here for sprouts to go in. And they'll be interplanted with the lettuce like the purple sprout and broccoli. And then if we come round to here, these are the tomatoes that I took the side shoots off in a previous vlog and said I could make tomato plants from them and these are the uh, side shoots that have grown and I've planted them out in the ground so I've uh, interplanted them with calendula which attracts pollinators um, but also sort of wards off the nasties that attract um, that are attracted to tomatoes so these are growing well. I planted these out last week and um, beginning to get some tomato flowers come in there. And then if I just come round to this side, I've got another row of peas. This is Hurst green shaft peas. Um, I can see some poking the heads up through the um, the soil, 
So it might look a bit sparse at the moment, but I'm hoping that it's just that some peas are slow to germinate. And then my squash arch, which I, uh, I don't think I've shown you yet. This side is doing very well. This side is taking its time to get going, really. Um, and there is quite a bit of black fly or something on here, um, which is probably inhibiting the growth somewhat. So it was looking a bit better than this the other day, but um, there's some ladybirds on there. So hopefully more ladybirds will come and uh, and help the plants out a bit. But let's see, is there any squashes forming anywhere that I can show you? There might be one around the other side. Um, these are, what are these? Turks turban, I think. Turks turban squashes. Then I've got this one big pumpkin coming along here which um, has got a pumpkin growing. I think this is 100 weight. I think that's what it's called, 100 weight. So there's one sort of form in there and there's one squash form in there and there's another little one form in there. And there's a Turks turban squash form in there. I planted some of my squash in pots this year because when I, I was originally planning the garden I was going to be growing on the second tier which um, had little, a lot less space so my idea was <clears throat> to grow the um, the squashes at different levels so the pots would be placed at different heights from the ground and therefore I could grow more squashes in a smaller space so when I had this larger patch I just originally kept to that idea because I just wanted to see how they would grow in the pots and whether it was a um, a good you know use of the space so they are growing even though they're taking a while to get going and I made a bit of a boo-boo with this pot because I planted a turks turban there and then this hundred weight was meant to go into this ground here and um, I meant to plant another squash in here but I got a bit confused so I, I planted the big hundred weight in the same pot so let's hope that um, they both do okay anyway now if we come round to this side this is a butter bush so it's a uh, butternut squash plant that grows sort of small butternut squashes. So there is one form in there and it's not meant to trail, it's meant to be a bush. So again, this is sat and didn't really get going for some time, but um, it has now began to have a few fruits growing on it. Similarly, this is another butter bush. Again, I um, bought this with um, growing space in mind. So if you don't have much growing space, one of these would be good because it's a compact little plant. And then down here, I've got, this is a, an, a normal size butternut squash plant. And there's one growing there. And this is meant to trail although previously i've tried growing butternut squash plants up something and they just never seem to get going to climb up they produce the fruits they just don't climb and <clears throat> similarly i've got another butternut squash plant here but um i can't see any fruit growing on this at the moment but it is beginning to climb a bit so the idea was to have a sort of lovely uh, selection of all different squashes climbing up and over this arch. Uh, which is kind of what's going on this side. So if we come to this side, just along the bottom here, I've got another hundredweight pumpkin. And um, 
the the start of this plant is there and then in these pots this is a yuchiki kuri so i've got two yuchiki kuri plants growing and there's a a squash form in there and there's there's a couple and it has sort of it is starting to wind its way up so hopefully it'll go up and over the top and then the fruits will sort of you know hang between the the rungs up there and next to the yuchiki curie I got a bottle gourd. I got two bottle gourd plants, which uh, Mothin sent me from my family garden, and um, they're just forming. So let me know what you think of that, Mothin, because there's a few coming along on here, and um, the, that plant, those plants are beginning to get a bit vigorous, which is very good. And then the other side of the squash plants, I've got my balotti beans, which again you would have seen me and my daughter planting up in a previous vlog, as well as lots of apples falling from this big apple tree that sort of provides a lot of shade for my chickens. But these apples, uh, they always, always get um, sort of like nasties in them. So we're very lucky to get a few off you because they all sort of just go like that and uh, yeah they're not very nice to eat then. There are a couple, the varieties are called as Handwell Souring. So if I take these at this stage I could make some uh, apple and chilli jam from it which is my plan. So um, I do need to take them off fairly soon because um, they'd be good for a couple of days and then the, whatever affects them will we'll get into them and spoil them. Anyway, going back to my beans. We have had some good germination here um, and I really just need to sort of tie them in so they will find their way up the bean poles. Uh, we did plant a bean either side so most of them have had one come up um, and a couple have had two so from the chitted beans they've not been as successful as I was hoping and next year I'm going to chit my beans and plant them into pots first not straight into the soil so um, I'm going to give that a go because the ones that had chitted and I've planted into the soil, into pots, sorry, have um, have grown quite well. They're in the greenhouse at the moment, so I will use them to like fill the gaps that are missing here. Um, and, and maybe I'll show you that in the greenhouse tour that I'll do next. Um, although they might have got planted out by that point. So I'm rambling now. Let's see what else I've got going on. So there's the Bellotti beans and that is now my squash and sweet corn bed. I'll move around to uh, get a closer look now. But I just wanted to show you from this angle because this is some squash plant, but I'm not sure what squash plant it is anymore because I can't tell if it's coming from the squash plants at the top and has come all this way, or if it, there's a squash plant there and it's belonging to that squash plant there, or whether it's belonging to that squash plant there. But as long as the squashes grow, it doesn't really matter what, um, what they belong to, does it? So I'll just come along here and um, I'll show you my sweet corn, which I would have expected it to have been higher, like up to about here, before this started forming. And I remember this variety is swift, and it did something similar to this over my allotment last year. Um, and because I had incredible and swift growing in two different places, um, I just assumed that the swift hadn't got going but maybe that is how swift grows i'm not sure because it's grown like that for the last two years now so um as long as it produces the cobs it doesn't really matter does it and down here are my cobra beans but again 
because the germination was slow see these are already putting on beans now because the germination was slow when I planted the sweet corn I was expecting the beans to have grown up the pole before the sweet corn sort of shadowed them out but now I think they are getting shadowed out by the sweet corn and the squash plants that are growing so they're not really going to do what I hoped they would do. So I have planted a few um, more cobra uh, chitted beans into a seed, uh, into a cell tray and um, I'm going to plant them in a different place. I'm going to plant them in one of those troughs I showed you earlier uh, because I just, I just think uh, they won't grow here now because they just won't have enough sun on them. So um, this sort of three bit sisters bed, um, it kind of hasn't worked. I think it would have worked if the beans had germinated first, like I meant them to. Um, and then they would have established themselves before everything else had, um, had sh overshadowed them. So maybe next year we'll be a bit more successful or maybe I'll, I'll grow them in different beds next year. We'll see. So yes, these squashes are growing really well. This is a crown prince, I believe, um, but they are kind of going everywhere now. So I had intended them to be sort of ground cover along the, uh, along the floor, but again, they've sort of grown uh, along with the sweet corn and some of the sweet corn is not growing as high I think because the foliage is um, shadowing out the sweet corn and then at the end of the bed this is kind of where the two crown prince plants begin there's the um that's that's where I've planted them. I have the hyacinth beans, which again Monty sent me from my family garden. So um they are growing okay from what I can see. I don't know if they should have beans yet. I, I believe they're a long growing seasonal plant, so I wouldn't have expected to see many beans at this moment in time. And then if we come over to here this is my flower bed, which I put in this year, um, and the, the plants are just beginning to grow. I've got a lot of plants in here for pollinating insects, and um, and also just to add a nice splash of colour to the uh, to the garden. And then down here, this is a sweet Aztec herb which uh, you can use in your teas to sweeten your tea instead of sweeteners and sugar. And along here I've got three um, Herb of Life uh, plants, which is for tea making. So this at the moment is my tea making section, but I want to build some shelves for it to go on a bit, um, a bit tidier. Not here, um, somewhere else. And um, we come along to my parsnips so I'll just take off the netting and here it is without the netting on so the the parsnips that did originally germinate are doing well and now we have a cluster here which makes no sense so I, th I think they must be three of the original ones which have now decided to germinate and then around the place we have one or two from where I planted um, chitted parsnip seeds and I think they are just taking a while to come through um, so we might yet have some parsnips there's some in the corner over here and then one coming through there they are tiny tiny at the moment so there's a couple showing through that might not be actually showing up on camera and it's the same with the other one over here um, they are beginning to pop through you can see how the difference in the ones that grew originally and the uh, 
the ones that are only just coming through now. And then a bit further up, this is going to, well, they're both going to be carrot crates. Uh, this one I've just started to fill and I need to fill the top with sieved compost and then plant into them. And similarly, the same with this. But the soil I'm using is um, soil that's been dug out from another project up the garden. So I'm waiting for my husband to finish digging up the soil so I can then sieve the next one, if that makes sense. Over here, this is my bed that's in the shade and um, it hasn't really done very well. I've pulled out the um, the spinach that was here and the mustard that was here. This beetroot has self-seeded itself. I have no idea where that comes from because all my seeds are sown in pots in the greenhouse. So where that's come from, I don't know. And my Swiss chard has now began to bolt. So what I shall do is I'll, um, I'll take all of that, harvest that, take it all out, and then I'll move this bed from here to there. And it should grow better there because it gets more sun. So if we just come around to um, this bed here, because I have grown my courgettes down there, but I just thought I would show you a few of these lovely coloured flowers that are growing here. Um, this blue, I don't know if it's picking up very well on the camera, but it's such a bright, vivid blue. It's, it's. I think it's a bit washed out on the camera at the moment. And my purple cone flowers are coming in. And at the back, the tabery bushes are getting away. I need to put another post in here and string that along, like I have done with the other tabery bushes down there. That is a job I need to do relatively soon. I've got loads of dahlias here and then hiding, well not hiding as much, but I have got some squash and some courgette plants here, which um, this one is a patty pan. So I'll be taking that patty pan today because I don't want it to grow any more. And um, the foliage on here is so much nicer than the foliage in my uh, neighbour's garden opposite. I don't quite know what's happened there. And I got another different variety here. So this one is um, Grisette de Provence, I think it is. So these are just beginning to get going now, these courgette plants. They've taken a while. But um, I can see by the foliage they are going to be flying away soon. So uh, we should be inundated with courgettes. And this one is uh, Dinaza one. And again, more Tabrys at the back there, which have done well. And these purple cone flowers, this is the first year they've um, flowered. It's taken them about two years to establish themselves and now to flower. And uh, if we just come around here, this is the final bed. Uh, in the back garden, which I don't think I've shown you for ages. And uh, it's rotated quite a bit since I originally planted it up. But there's carrots there. Those are nants too, which are um, slowly growing. They're a bit baby carrot-like at the moment, but we are having a few from there. Um, I've got some spare celeriac plants in there. Then, oh, it would help if I take the netting off. Hang on. Now I can get down and um, show you what's going on. So yes, there's more spring onions here. These are ready to go. And the beetroot is ready for picking as well. Then the multi sown leeks. Well, they'll stay here until they are ready. Um, but they are part of the winter crop. Again, the beetroot is probably ready to go now. My lettuces, we've had a good five harvests from these lettuces so we'll probably have one more and then I'll, I'll plant some different lettuces in their space. This is perpetual spinach which a neighbour gave me quite fortunately really because my um, my bed with the spinach in the shady bed um, didn't work like I was intending so that all bolted so I was a bit short on spinach but fortunately my neighbour 
had some perpetual spinach and that's lovely down here i've got a row of nance carrots again they just come through and here is some sugar snap peas which are just about done well, we've had a nice crop of sugar snaps from here so i'll probably take what's left on here and um, uh, replace it with something else and finally my row of fruit trees which um, haven't been that great a success this year uh, this one is a pear no it's a yes a pear and it's not really well it's stay dormant actually um, if it wasn't for this bit of green growth here I'd be worried that uh, well I'd killed it by moving it but I I'm thinking it's just gone dormant while it puts its roots back down into the ground and um, I do need to give it a thorough, thorough prune anyway and um, I believe it might be the time to do it um, now roughly and again similarly here no fruit on this um, pear tree let's have a look it's got the name on here yeah this is a concord pear and no pears on here that is a plum tree i believe as is the the one behind it which again i've had no plums off either of them what a pair of plums eh um this is my cherry tree, which you will have seen the harvest my first ever cherries from there, which was a very exciting time. And um, my apple trees, they're not doing too bad. I need to take this this off. I think that's fire, fire burn or fire blight, something like that. So I just need to take that back to the, the good green growth there and uh, take that off. And similarly with this apple tree, it's uh, it's not done great, but it, it, I, I did move them quite late, so I can't expect too much. And this apple tree up here is probably the best for apples this year. There's a few on there, but again, they haven't got very big, so um, so I don't think we'll be having a great amount of apples this year. And I'll just take you down along here. You can have a nice, you can have a look at my chickens. Come to say hello. And I've got a big fig tree here, which um, is producing figs. And a small fig tree there, which I only planted up this year. This, I in, this big one I inherited from a friend. And then this is the other plum tree I was talking about, which again needs a good prune. And I think it's the time of year to do it now. And there's just one solitary tiny, tiny plum growing on that. So that's an end to my tour of what I've got growing in my back garden. I will now, um, I will also film a tour of what's going on in my neighbour's garden and the front garden. So that will be my next one. Um, so hopefully you'll join me again to see what, what's going on there. And I uh, hope you've enjoyed watching um, this vlog and seeing what I've got going on. It's all a bit... Um, well, I don't know if it's working or not, really. There's been some highlights and some flubs so far. But we are having constant harvests from the garden now. So it is beginning to produce something. Um, so hopefully... I'll catch you next time. All I can say about what's growing in my garden at the moment is lovely job.